Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at an application of quadratic functions. Now, sometimes when we have an application of quadratic functions, the function is given to us. And then we can just use that function to answer the question. If other information is present, such as angles or speed or whatever in relation to how that equation is determined, ignore the pieces of information. It might be deceiving, they may not be needed. However, what if we don't have an equation given to us? Then maybe those details might be necessary. Let's look at an example of a, an example of a quadratic equation, a quadratic ap function application where we need to come up with the actual function, the formula for it. For instance, suppose that we have 100 feet of fencing and we're trying to enclose a particular corral type area. Okay, so maybe something like this. And maybe this length is x, so it's the same there and there and there. And maybe this length is w, 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 and w. Okay, now given the situation, we want to figure out what x should be and what w should be in order so we get the maximum amount of area. Now you notice this word maximum? Hey, that's a lot like on a parabola or quadratic function, maximum y value. So since we're doing, we're trying to figure out the maximum of something, it's kind of like we're trying to find the maximum y value. So that means whatever maximum qualifies or whatever it um, describes, which is what follows it, area, that means area will refer to y value. So when we write down our equation for our quadratic function, we have y equals, we know y is going to be area. Now, maximum area, meaning all the area cumulatively enclosed here in this, in this sense. So we need to come up with a formula for the area of this. And if it's going to be a function and dependent on one variable, we need to write this down in terms of x. But first, let's just do it in anything we can. Better to do something than nothing. Just do something and then we can play with it and see if we can change it. So first, let's just write down a formula for area. So you pick what, what your y value is going to be, area. And then the next step is just to write down anything you like in terms of any variables you want for that area. So that's the first step. So remember, first step is to just write down any. It doesn't matter how many variables you're using, any formula for the y value. And you could say the zeroth step was to actually realize that the y value was area, right? As to figure out what the y value represents. And we got that. And we got that right from the word maximum. If now, if we were in a situation where we had minimum, then we'd get it from the word minimum. Okay, so we have area, so y equals, and then we figure out, all right, a formula for it. Let's see, to find the area of this whole thing. Well, we know this side length is 3w. We know this side length is x. So x times 3w should give you the total area in here. So, we could say the area is x times 3w. All right, now we got to figure out how to write this in terms of just x. Right now we have an x and a w. Hmm. Well, that's where maybe this other piece of information might come in handy. We have 100 feet of fencing. Well, let's see how that could work. Maybe we can come up with an equation that, for that just relates 100 feet of fencing to x and w. And then maybe we can use that equation to solve for w. 
So we can rewrite w in terms of x and thus after substitution, just get something in terms of x. So let's see how that would work. We have 100 feet of fencing, and that's equal to, let's see, x plus x plus x plus x. So 4x plus w plus w, 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 6w. And that's nice. OK, so we have 100 is equal to 4x plus 6w. Now, um, let's solve for w so we can write w in terms of x. Subtract 4x from both sides. Now we can divide both sides by 6. So if we did that, then we would end up getting that divided by 6. OK, so then this part right here can be substituted in for w. So now we have our equation. y is equal to x times 3 times 100 minus 4x all over 6. There we go. Let's get that. All right, then we have 3 over 6, so we can simplify that to 1 over 2. And we, okay, maybe we can factor out the, let me just kind of go like here. Let's erase this. Let's do our work up here so we can see what's going on. So we have our function. Notice y equals something, and it's all in terms of x after the substitution that we just made for w. So let's just always remember kind of where we're at and what we're doing. Now we're going to take this and try to find the maximum, the maximum of it. Thinking of this as a quadratic function. Well, is it a quadratic function? Let's just see. So notice I have the one and the two. OK, what I'm going to do then, let's just write this down. y is equal to x. And then since it's just 1, I'll just ignore that, times 100 minus 4x all over um, all over 2. OK, now notice that 2 divides evenly into 100 and into and this is a negative 4. So you can kind of think of unadding fractions like this, same denominator, just unadding them. And then divide. So we get 50 minus 2x times x. And that's equal to y. So look, we have a nice formula here. And I bet it's a quadratic, because you can kind of see if you multiply this out, I'm going to get an x squared. Let's just see about that. So let's distribute that x through. And we end up getting negative 2x squared from the x times the negative 2x. And then we have plus 50x. 50x is right there, and then x times negative 2x is right there. So that's y. OK, this is great. This is a quadratic function, and let's find the maximum of it. Now, to do that, we're going to need to rewrite this in standard form so we can see it as a transformation. That's often called completing the square. So let's just work through that. All right. So erase this and we'll go for it. All right, so then we have um, y is equal to, we can factor out the negative 2. So we have um, x squared, maybe make that a bracket here, x squared um, minus 25x. You can check when you multiply the negative 2 out, you'll end up getting that. OK. Then we replace this part with x minus, oh, we had to uh, take 1 half of that 25. So 25 halves squared. And we have a, um, <clears throat> OK, but in making this replacement within these brackets, recall 
that we have to add something. We add this part squared. So this part right here squared is 625 over 4, squaring the numerator and the denominator. That means we're going to have to subtract this over here. OK, and we have a negative 2 times all of that. The negative 2 distributes through. So we get negative 2, x minus 25 halves, quantity squared. And then we get plus 625 over 2. Notice how the 2 and the 4 interact. So 1 and 2 on simplifying the fraction, the negative negative become positive. So it looks like our function rewritten looks like this. Well, wait a minute. This is the y value of the vertex. That's the maximum, especially since this is negative. So it's been a, a reflected parabola. So this is the maximum. That's the maximum area. So we know that the maximum area is maximum is equal to 625 divided by 2, which is the same as 312.5. That's the maximum area. Now, if, okay, so if the uh, units, because we didn't give units to begin with, if it was in feet, oh, I guess we did, we said 100 feet. So then this would be, since it's area, this would be square feet. All right, then what about, um, what does X have to be and W? Those are the two def things we wanted to know. What was X and what's W? Hmm. Well, let's go back to our formula for, um, for area that we had in terms of x and w. Do you remember that um, this was this whole side length was 3w and then x, and then to find the area, it was x times 3w? All right, so let's use this now, especially since we know what the x value is at the maximum. It's actually 25 halves, which is 12.5. So we know that x has to be 12.5. So what does w have to be? Hmm. Well, you know, x times 3w is equal to 625 over 2. And you know what x is. x is 25 halves, or 12.5. Now, for sake of ease, I'm going to use the fraction, 25 over 2. Because notice, if I multiply both sides by 2, that goes away. And I'm left with 25 times 3, which is, uh, so 25 times 3. And I'll erase right here. OK. I'm just trying to stay in one slide here so you can kind of see our work. But um, here we have uh, 25 times 3w is equal to 625. If I divide both, I'm going to divide both sides by 25. And if I do, you actually get 3w is equal to 25. And so um, we end up getting w is equal to 8.3 repeating. So w is equal to 8.3 repeating. OK, so if we have um, this w and we have this x right here, put together, um, we uh, put, put together, we end up getting the maximum area, which is 625 over 2, or 312.5 feet. Thanks for watching.